Alright, another Newton's first law example here. A tether ball experiences a force of gravity of 6.4 newtons. The wind is blowing hard on the tether ball with an applied force of 2.4 newtons. The ball is held in place by a rope that attaches to the top of the pole. What angle does the rope make with the top of the pole? So here's the tether ball, here's the ball uh, attached by a rope to a pole, and here it says it's held in place. Held in place means at rest, which means acceleration equals zero, which means net force equals zero. And that's how we know that this is a Newton's first law problem. So here's our tether ball of mass unknown with an applied force of gravity of 6.4 newtons. And the wind is blowing on the side of this tether ball at 2.4 newtons. Remember that uh, if the net force is going to be zero, it's going to have to be zero in both directions. So this uh, tensile force is going to have to balance both of those forces. So it's going to have to go up and to the left here to balance them off the force of tension. What that means is that we can think of it in two components that are in the directions we're using, FTY and FTX. And then without really doing any serious mathematics, we can see by inspection what those two values will be. The force of gravity is pulling down with 6.4, so this force must be pulling up with 6.4 newtons. Similar, the wind is pushing to the right at 2.4 newtons, so the tensile force must be pulling back at negative 2.4 newtons to cancel those out. So what we have here are two components of a vector that we can combine to get the overall vector. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem here to get the overall magnitude of the force of tension. So I get a 6.8 Newton magnitude of that force. And now I'm going to use the tan ratio to solve for that unknown angle. Works out to 20.6 degrees. So that tensile force that's balancing the force of gravity in the wind and allowing the ball to remain stationary has to be 6.8 newtons y negative 20.6 degrees x. Or you could say y 20.6 degrees negative x, doesn't matter. So there it is. Here we have a, another conceptual problem. I'm going to put these conceptual problems, at least one in each lesson on, on the laws themselves. Uh, I think it can be really easy in physics to get carried away with the mathematical modeling of everything. You're always coming up with, you know, if just using the numbers to represent it. And it's a really important part of physics, and we're, we're obviously focused on that. But I want to make sure that we're not losing uh, focus on the concept of what we're really talking about and how it relates to the real world as well. I'll explain why a crate resting in the back of a truck wants to slide up towards the front of the truck bed when the truck stops suddenly. Here's our truck. Just going to keep them really simple. Something like that. Here's our crate. And so the car is moving along and then when it comes to a sudden stop, so it's going to accelerate this way, this crate is going to slide this way. We know this is a Newton first law problem, obviously. We're in the Newton's first law section, but we're going to go through it properly anyways. So step one, state what's happening. The crate is an object in motion 
when the truck stops. Now we're going to state a law that applies to this situation. Newton's first law states that objects in motion tend to stay in motion unless there is an unbalanced force. Now I'm going to make a statement that relates uh, those two things together. Unless the force of friction between the crate and truck bed is high enough the crate may stay in motion as the truck comes to a stop. This will cause the crate to move forward. So the crate is an object in motion when the truck stops. That's what's happening here. Newton's first law states that the object in motion tends to stay in motion unless there's an unbalanced force. Unless the force of friction, that would be our unbalanced force, between the crate and the truck bed is high enough, the crate may stay in motion as the truck comes to a stop. This will cause the crate to move forward within the truck. So that's again using our structure to try and answer conceptual problems. All right, next up is Newton's second law.